Gone away. February 24, 1214 p.m., District Court, courtroom number nine. The court will now reconvene for the trial of Ms. Lana Sky. Emma didn't come back. Allow me to call the next witness to the stand. The officer in charge of guarding the evidence room on the day of the crime. <laughs> witness, please state your name and occupation. Me, partner? Oh, I'm just a man, same as you, wandering the trails of civilization. Occasionally helping the elderly cross intersections when needed. Yes, we get it. Oh, I know. You're a patrolman. As for my name, if you listen hard enough, you can hear the howling wind calling it out. To be exact, it's Jake Marshall, Your Honor. Howling wind? I've never heard Edgeworth described that way before. <laughs> Now, Mr. Marshall, let me ask you something. You were in charge of guarding the evidence room on the day the crime took place. Is this correct? According to the papers, partner. What do you mean? The Desperado's soul is as boundless as the desert sands. No paper can sum it up. Maybe it's best we get on with this quickly. Please share with us your testimony of the day of the crime. In plain old English. <laughs> Leave the cry. My job was to keep a wary eye on that bone orchard. They said I was supposed to make rounds three times a day, but that ain't my style. Besides, the room is protected by two security systems anyway. If I remember right, I was at a street side saloon at the time it went down. I'm just an innocent traveling man, so if you're out of ammo, it's time I hit the trail. Really need to talk to you about your drinking problem. Can't say I particularly care for your attitude. I can't say I care for your beard, but you don't see me complain. Wait a minute. What do you mean by two security systems? I mean the security cameras and the ID card reader. I reckon even a capwalk like you knows about those. Yes, well, what about the fingerprint-activated locks on the evidence lockers? Fingerprint-activated locks? What kind of newfangled doohickeys are those? He's not being very helpful. He's not that good with machines, or with following orders. Everyone's got their weaknesses now, don't they, Mr. Prosecutor? This one seems like trouble. Okay, Mr. Wright, he's all yours. Huh. Tell us your things. Job was to keep a wary eye on that bone orchard. Bone orchard? How exactly did you keep an eye on the evidence room? I just made sure nothing moved in the security camera monitor. That room is so still. Even time dies in there. I was just a caretaker who interred the recordings. You interred them? But it was a nothing. Aren't that useful? When the time would come, I'd erase the tape. If nothing unusual is recorded, tapes are to be erased. Tapes are to be erased every six hours. Each time I'd erase a tape, it felt like it was erasing a part of my life. This guy has a flair for the dramatic and can't spell that, but it isn't going to do him any good. So, in actuality, you don't physically enter the evidence room? I said I was supposed to make rounds three times a day, but that ain't my style. But you made your rounds on the day of the crime, right? Didn't you heard a word I said, partner? I've told you that ain't my style. Hmm. I'm afraid I don't understand. No Desperado I know lets rules get in his way. No Desperados I know join the police force. So, Officer Marshall, on the day of the crime, 
Just between you and me, I didn't set foot in the evidence room that day. Was rubber glove stuck in the victim's locker? Do you know anything about that? Sorry, partner, can't say I do. I've been in that crypt in weeks. How does this guy avoid being fired? The room is protected by two security systems anyway. You used to be a detective, so you've used the evidence room in the past, correct? Of course. Back in the day, my locker was a gold mine of evidence. And yet, you didn't know about the fingerprint locking mechanism? Sorry, pardon. I ain't good with machines. Couldn't even tell you how a bike works. That's quite, uh, incredible. The sensors on the locker handles cannot be seen. It's well known that some detectives are unaware of their presence. Now that he mentions it, Detective Gumshoe said something like that too. At any rate, it doesn't seem that this is relevant to the crime. Can you tell us what you were doing when the crime took place? If I remember right, I was at the Streetside Saloon at the time it went down. What were you doing in a place like that? I was eating spaghetti. Cleveland Angel's steak lunches can beat that parlor's vongole sepia pasta. Do you mean to tell us you abandon your police duties to eat some noodles? Not all desperados eat tuckers, partner. That's not what I meant. I hope this has at least taught you a lesson. That's strange. This is usually where Edworth says, Did you not want a raise this year? Just missing traveling man, so if you're out of ammo, it's time I hit the trail. Out of ammo, Professor Marshall? Professor Officer Marshall? <laughs> That's right, partner. Or as you call it, evidence. If you plan to pin me to this crime, then you better be... Ah, uh, draw. Otherwise, you're just wasting my time. My steel horse is waiting to carry me back west into the sunset. Hmm. One thing seems clear. Despite being responsible for guarding the evidence room, the witness doesn't appear to have seen anything. Texans don't take order from anyone. Everyone knows that. Apparently your superiors don't. Okay, I have a trump card up my sleeve, so I'd best keep my cool. Before I use it, though, I'd better up the ante. Okay. Okay, so... He says he didn't go in. We did show... Mm -hmm. Not the rubber glove. Marshall's fingerprints. Not yet. Your Honor, that statement contradicts this bark, 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 okay. Alright. Well, he did say I had to do another thing to... Two security systems. We already reject that. Hmm. Okay, so what am I showing? Joe Dark. Security video. The jar. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay. 
So this is mean. If he doesn't want the thing... Oh, wait! Back! Hold on. Okay. I have a trump card up my sleeve, so I best keep my cool. And that's the handprint. Before I use it, though, I better, use, I better up the ante. How am I upping the ante? What do I have again? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Wait. Okay, so is he the all sevens one? Have I had a way to determine that? <laughs> Rubber glove. It says SL911. It's written on the tag. It seems this has more evidence from that incident. I don't know why it shows me just that. Okay, we've seen the video. The video which is just... We see the guy who looks like Bruce uh, Goodman go in. And then the Meekins come out. Of course, we don't see any actual faces. Mm hmm. Hmm. The whole badger shenanigans. Wow. That knife he attacks him with. So we still never see the guy leave. Mm -hmm. Does he stash the thing there? Anyway, um... Hey. Victor Neil Marshall. Investigator Jake Marshall. Yeah. Anyway, um... I don't know what I have that I would show here. Oh! You made your rounds on the day of the crime. Okay, so I need him saying that. Hmm. Like, yeah. Like, but you weren't there. Is that correct? Is it supposed to be three times a day? Do I have data s uh, disputing that? Mm -hmm. Crime scene. Room's protected by two security systems anyway. 
Except it wasn't. Uh, street side saloon? I don't know what he means by up the ante. I mean, the other thing that I would want to show him is the, uh, the access log. But I don't know where it would be appropriate to show that. Hmm. Mm hmm. Are you supposed to be one of the security systems? At the time it went down. That happened around 5.12, 5 5.15. 5 well... Yeah, what do you mean the time it went down? Like, Mekin said nobody was there, which is correct. We do know he was out. But... Screwdriver... That was the bait... that was used to get Edgeworth in there. Wait a minute. There's no time on that. Okay. All right. So if I just show him the other security system, does that... I don't think that's it. Sure, whatever. Nah. <laughs> no. Didn't go so well. Don't make me do this again. So apparently, I'm supposed to show it to a different point. Okay, yeah, see, that's... See, that didn't make sense, because... Like, we found prints that they weren't, like, time-stamped prints. So, like, specifically at the time... Anyway, whatever. <laughs> Officer Marshall, doesn't it strike you as odd? That is, you being called in to testify like this? After all, you weren't in the security room at the time of the crime. <laughs> Did you drag me down here? Explain yourself, partner. It's quite simple. You left a very large trail behind at the scene. Or, to be exact, a handprint. Hmm. It was real good, partner. Like I said, I'm a caretaker of that crypt. I'll pay my respects. That is, make my rounds about once a month. <laughs> it's only natural my fingerprints would be in there. I only wish it were, officer. But you see, your fingerprints were covered in blood. Witness, what's the meaning of this? Your bloodstained fingerprints were at the crime scene? The blood was wiped away, however. Luminol test clearly revealed this. Well, Officer Marshall? Hmm. Seems to me there ain't a person in this room with a head on his shoulders. 
Hmm? I take it you have an explanation then, Officer Marshall? About the blood-stained fingerprints? Very well, you may begin your testimony about the, your fingerprints found at the scene of the crime. Alright, blood-stained fingerprints. Like I said, it's only natural for my fingerprints to be in the evidence room. One of them just happened to be at the same place as the bloodstained handprint. The murderer touched the locker where my fingerprint was by chance. The bloodstain and the fingerprint are completely unrelated. Didn't you know the murderer was wearing gloves? How did you know the murderer was wearing gloves? See, I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> Hmm. The witness explanation feels appears valid, although there's room for doubt. Life wouldn't be fun without any doubt, partner. The defense may now cross-examine the witness. This guy's hiding something, I can feel it. Now's my chance to prove it. Blood stained fingerprints. <laughs> Like I said, it's only natural for my fingerprints to be in that evidence room. Hold it! That's because you... how did you put it? Pay your respects for once a month? Yeah, that's right. That and one more thing. Well, that locker happens to be mine. What? What do you mean? I mean what I said. That's the locker I used when I was a detective. The locker I still use. All that's in there now, though, is a heap of broken dreams. I see. It'd be strange if my prints weren't all over that locker. Apparently, his fingerprint data was never removed from that locker's programming. He must have been using the fingerprint lock all this time without ever knowing it. Hey, Marshall's fingerprints updated in the court record. Found on a bloody handprint on Marshall's own locker. The print has been wiped. Okay, so that is uh, another thing that we've learned. Is that he's been there another time since then. Because the thing that is hanging out, the, the bit of cloth, was not in the video. Actually, was it in the video at some point? It wasn't at the beginning of the video. Watch, watch. It was in the explanation video, but that was about it. Explanation video? Yeah, where he's like, that's my locker. It had the little... Yeah, because we were, we were flashback on when we were actually there. Okay. So then, what about the bloody handprint? One mind. It's no mystery. Please explain. My locker is covered with my fingerprints. It just so happened... A murderer touched a locker where my fingerprint was by chance. The chances of that happening are a million to one. On the contrary, one could argue just the opposite. The chances of that not happening are a million to one. Get one thing straight, partner. You ain't gonna get no reward from me for with a mere fingerprint. You wanna know why? Bloodstain and the fingerprint are completely unrelated. Unrelated? They're as different as night and day. Kind of like cereal and cereal. One's got to do with breakfast while the other's a type of murder. He's right. Although seemingly alike, they're totally different. Don't see what homonyms have to do with this. <laughs> and the murderer was wearing gloves? I don't think we do. How do you know that? I may be a loner, but I still do my job. I keep up on the reports. There was a bloodstain at the scene thought to be left by the murderer. Mm, that's right. It was found on Detective Gumshoe's locker. However, no fingerprints were detected on that handprint. Oh yeah, I think we tried that too. Hmm. So that would mean that the murderer wearing gloves Happened to place their hand on top of Officer Marshall's fingerprint. That's the only logical conclusion. 
while you were starting to get the picture, partner. The picture? You see the blood. And the desert is just food for the buzzards. Hmm. There's only one reality, and that's this. The security tape. As long as my trail isn't there, you can't see otherwise. Okay, I think the video does, uh, let's see. This isn't getting us anywhere, Mr. Wright. Please consider carefully where you're going with this cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> now then, continue your testimony, Officer Marshall. You bet it wasn't me in that video, right, partner? Maybe it was. What do you mean by that? You want a time of this crime, isn't that right, partner? Mm hmm. If so, that video is the only direct evidence you have. But that video is next to useless. It's full of blind spots. Blind spots? Places you can't see. The camera's panning back and forth, and the floor isn't shown. Hey, okay, so... If someone was familiar with the camera's position... So do we see anything in there? There is something hanging out of there now. And they could leave the room without being cut on tape. Objection! There wasn't to start with, I think. There was We don't have time for your speculations, Mr. Wright. Well, Mr. Wright, if you can show us evidence in this video that indicates Officer Marshall was present, please do so now. Yes, I have evidence. Very well. Allow me to point out your mistake, Officer Marshall. Be carefully, Mr. Wright, or you might wind up being the one making the mistake. Now then, let's have another look at the video. Show us this incriminating evidence of the witness, Officer Jake Marshall. Alright, so at the beginning, nothing hanging out of the locker. Point, still nothing hanging out of the locker. <laughs> and Meekins comes in, still nothing hanging out of the locker. <laughs> Eats him up with a knife. We don't see when he leaves, because whatever. There's a 1505, 6. <laughs> and there it is. Right there. Bringing our attention back to the security camera. It's a mistake I'm afraid you'll soon not forget, Officer Marshall. Hmm. Days are short in Texas, and so are our tempers. Could you sum up what you have to say in eight words or less? <laughs> Very well. You can clearly be seen in this video. Exactly eight words. Not bad, partner. The key lies in a certain locker shown in the video. <laughs> that locker with the white cloth sticking out. That was the witnesses, I believe. Now then, let's rewind the video a bit. <clears throat> <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, the white cloth. It's gone. What's the meaning of this, Officer Marshall? When the crime took place, the white cloth wasn't there. Then it suddenly appeared. There's only one explanation. Officer Marshall, you were in the evidence room at the time of the crime. What's more, you opened your locker with the camera was turned away. Order, order. 
It would seem that's the hold your horses, sorry, partner. But you got the wrong man. Mm -hmm. So what of my locker was opened. That doesn't mean I'm the one who opened it. The murderer needed to hide something, so we opened the locker and stuck it in. It's not our fault that you happened to choose mine. Mm. Why is everyone staring at me like I'm a wanted man? And this guy is just plain dumb. He really doesn't know. Uh, I hate to rain on your parade, but you're the only person who can open that particular locker. Oh yeah? I'll call your bluff. You say I open that locker. Now prove it. Ah, I have so many items. Only the assigned detective prince can unlock it. Oh. Fingerprint sensor. Oh, we talked about this earlier today. The lockers can only be opened by the detectives they belong to. What, what kind of crazy talk is this? Well, Detective Gumshoe did mention something about this. <laughs> okay, so locks aren't that obvious. There are even some people on the force that don't know about fingerprint locks. So, Sheriff, what do you have to say in eight words or less? <laughs> I got one word for you, partner. No! <laughs> order, order, order. Witness, explain yourself. This is a joke. It's the worst I've ever heard. I assure you, this is no joke, Officer Marshall. Now then, please tell us what you were doing in the evidence room at the time of the crime. Ole, please answer the question. Ole? What is he now, a bullfighter? That's all right, Officer Marshal. I believe we can figure the rest out from here. We can. Have a look at these floor plans. There is no place for someone to hide in the evidence room. Yet Officer Meekins didn't see Officer Marshal. If that's so, then where was the witness? Seems Mr. Wright has an answer. And that's right. The only possible conclusion. Well then, let's hear it. Where was Officer Marshall at the time of the crime? Well, we said that was Meekins. Victim, killer, V and K, okay. Wait. Bark, bark. Take that. Officer Marshall was standing right here. There, but that's... That's where the victim, Detective Goodman, was. Correct. Unless the man wasn't a Detective Goodman. I believe the victim in the video is Officer Marshall. It was you dressed up like Detective Goodman. But that's preposterous. Officer Meekins witnessed the detective at the crime scene. Once he saw the man's face, he'd know for sure. Objection. May I point out, though, that Officer Meekins did not know Detective Goodman. He also testified about the man's reaction when confronted. And there at the evidence room, I asked him to show his card, sir. Yes, and how did Detective Goodman respond? He suddenly pulled out a knife on me! Something about the officer's story puzzled me. If the man had had his ID card, why didn't he just show it? Yes, he would have needed it to enter the evidence room, so he must have been carrying it. The answer is simple. He couldn't show it. Hmm? As you can see, Detective Goodman's picture is on his ID card. Oh, I get it. If he showed that, his cover would have been blown. Officer Meekins would have realized the man wasn't Detective Goodman. Do you have anything to say to this, Officer Marshall? 
this is still entirely separate from the matter of, you know, actual hoodman being killed half an hour away, but, you know, you got quite an imagination, partner. You got a term for that. It's called a circumstantial evidence. Circumstantial evidence? Still denying it. You'd have to do better than that to break a detective. Unless you have hard evidence proving I dressed up as the victim. Hmm. I can't say I particularly care for your uncooperative disposition. I can't say I care for your beard, but you don't hear me complain. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have anything, any evidence proving beyond a shadow of a doubt that Officer Marshall dressed up as the victim? Well, who am I kidding? I don't have anything like that. I can see the fear in your eyes, but seems you're the one who couldn't take the desert heat. Ah! Well, this can't be happening. It's so obvious he's the one. What can I do? Looks <laughs> like your lack of experience has finally been exposed. Hmm? I'll pass on to you what someone told me when I was just starting out. You run into a wall, no place to go, return to the basics. And the basics? Contradictions. For me, that would be what Mia used to tell me. Phoenix, try thinking outside of the box. I shouldn't look for proof that Officer Marshall was in disguise. But rather I should look for evidence that came about because he was in disguise. <laughs> 